Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 7 duality in linear programming problem. Hence the learning objective of uh, this lesson is to find out the dual of the linear programming problem. The dual in linear programming model is that it states that every linear programming problem has another linear programming problem related to it and this can be derived from the original linear programming problem. The original linear programming problem is called primal and the derived one while the derived linear problem from the original from the primal will be called dual. Generally if the linear programming primal involves maximizing a profit that is maximization so it is a, and subjected to the less than or equal to resource constraints, the dual will involve a minimizing, or we can say minimization, minimizing total opportunity costs subjected to the greater than or equal to product profit constraint. Dual of dual becomes primal. Dual of the dual, that means when we find out the dual of the primal, we get the first derived linear problem that is dual and when we again drive another dual from the dual we get we return back to the primal so that is why we call dual of dual becomes primal the importance of duality uh, we learn about duality because there are some importance or there are some benefits the dual contains economic information useful to management. It has an economic information which tells more than the primal, more than the primal. It may also be easier to solve. Once we solve the dual, we can get the, the solution for the primal. So we can solve either the dual or the primal. In some cases, it may be easier to solve the dual rather than the primal. So, in this case, it is better to find out the dual so as to get the solution for the linear programming. It may also be easier to solve in terms of less competition. It requires less competition sometimes. The dual requires less competition than the primal, in some cases, than the primal problem. And the other importance is it is the relationship between the primal and its dual, both on mathematical and economic level, that is truly the essence of duality theory. It shows the relationship of the primal and dual, both on mathematical as well as economic level. This is truly the importance of what duality theory states that. Because of this importance, it is good, it is advisable to know the duality of the primal. Moving to the concept of duality, let's see how the duality, how the primal and dual relationship originated, how we develop or how we form, how we formulate the dual from the primal, the original problem. So, by taking this example, by taking this example, let's do it. Let's formulate the duality of this primal problem. The primal problem, as you see, is maximization z equals 3x1 plus 4x2 such that, or uh, subjected to the constraint 1 over 2x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 30 and 3x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 25. x1 and x2 greater than or equal to zero. This is a normalized primal or maximization problem. So from this, let's try to uh, formulate the dual, the dual. By the way, this is an important concept, which shows that how the dual can be developed, originated from the primal, from the primal. So the first constraint, as you see here, uh, we have to compare the constraints, each constraints with the objective function and we have to combine, we have to combine the constraints and 
again compare with uh, objective function so the first uh, thing that we do is uh, the first let's compare the first constraint is the first constraint with the objective function at least to narrow down to narrow down the value of the value of uh, z so uh, to find out the value of z at least to find the range where the value of z lies uh, when we multiply by 6, the first constraint will be multiplied by 6 uh, to make it to make it uh, suitable to compare with uh, z function z function. So when we multiply both sides by 6, by the way, when we multiply both sides by any number, there is no change. There is no change. We can multiply both sides by any number or we can divide both sides by any number. So uh, still the equation works or still the inequality works because we just multiply both sides both sides so when we multiply by six by the way we take we select six to make to make the constraints to be suitable to compare with the maximization that is the z function so when we multiply by six six times one over two it becomes three x one plus here twelve x to less than or equal to 30 times 6 180 so it becomes like this like this so when this 3x1 plus 12x2 less than or equal to 180 and our objective function is 3x1 plus 4x2 let's compare let's compare these two function 3x1 is equal to 3x1 here 3x1 is equal to 3x1 and 4x1 is 4x2 is obviously less than 12x2, right? 4x2. Since these are the positive number because of the non-negativity restrictions, 4x2 from this equation is obviously less than or equal to 12x2. So we can write the constraint is greater than the objective function. The objective function is 3x1 plus 4x2 equal to z less than or equal to 3x1 plus 12x2. And the constraint by itself is less than or equal to 180. 180. So from this, we can conclude that z is z, the objective function is less than or equal to 180. 180. So we finished the first task. And the second task is to compare the second constraint with the objective function. Now, first, First, we have to uh, we have to uh, compare we have to compare the uh, second constraint with the objective function. Before that, we have to multiply we have to multiply to make it suitable to compare. We have to multiply by four. We have to multiply at least one of the variable coefficients should should be the same to make it suitable to compare. So when we multiply both sides by four, both sides of the second constraints by four, it becomes 12x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 100 and 25 is multiplied by 400. So when we compare this this second constraint, this second constraint with the objective function, as you see, there is 3x1 here and 4x2 in the objective function. 4x2 cancelled with 4x2 and 3x1 is obviously less than or equal to 12x1. 12x1. So the second constraint is, is greater than or equal to, or we can say the objective function is less than or equal to the second constraint is and the second constraint is less than or equal to 100 so from this we can we can bring out we can formulate or we can conclude that z is less than or equal to 100 z is less than or equal to 100 so we further minimize the uh, value of z uh, in the first constraint we said that z is less than or equal to 180 and in the second constraint we further minimize the z that is less than or equal to 100. The value of z becomes less than or equal to 100. For further extension of z below 100, to make, to find out the z value below 100, let's combine the two constraints by adding them. Let's combine. Let's add the constraints. So to, con to add the constraints to make it suitable, let's multiply the first constraint is by 2. When we multiply by 2, it becomes x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 60. And the second, as it is, we take as it is. As it is, that means 3x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 25. Let's add, let's add this. x1 plus 
3 x 2 it becomes it becomes it becomes 4 x 1 4 x 1 and 4 x 2 plus x 2 it becomes 5 x 2 and 60 plus 25 it becomes 85 85 so the combination of the two constraints become 4 x 1 plus 5 x 2 less than equal to 85 now let's compare this this combination with the z function the z function z function as you know 3 x 1 plus 4 x 2 uh, let's cancel as you see uh, 3x1 is less than 4x1 and even 4x2 is also less than or equal to 5x2 5x2 so this combined combined this combined equation is still greater than the objective function or we can say the objective function is less than or equal to the combined uh, constraints thus we can conclude from here z is less than or equal to 85 z is less than or equal to 85 so we further minimize the value of z we further optimize the value of z let's move to the next now we get the value of the z value less than or equal to 85 now let's make unknown variables y1 and y2 as a coefficient of the constraints let's return back it's returned back that is y1 becomes the coefficient of uh, the first constraints and y2 becomes the coefficient of the second constraints so combining the two constraints we get when we combine once we multiply it by y1 and y2 and when we combine we get this function that is 1 over 2 y1 1 over 2 y1 plus 3 y2 x1 plus 2 y1 plus y2 times x2 less than or equal to 30y1 plus 25y2 by the way you can just multiply this y1 uh, with both sides and you get this you get this y1 times 1 over 2x1 plus y1 times 2x2 less than or equal to 30y1 and we, when, when we, we multiply y2 by the second constraint we get y2 times 3x1 plus y2 x2 less than or equal to 25y2 and we combining the two constraints that means adding the two constraints the two constraints like this one and bringing the same coefficients x1 bringing the same uh, coefficients x1 so 1 over 2 y 1 plus 3 y2 times the common coefficient is x1 plus 2 y1 plus y2 the common coefficient is multiplied by x2 less than or equal to 30 y1 plus 25 y2 so to minimize to minimize this to minimize this our objective is to minimize uh, the right hand side to minimize this we can say minimization equals w minimization equals w 30 y1 plus 25 y2 that means we want to minimize this right we want to minimize this to further minimize the z function as we did in the previous steps so we just said that minimization w equals 30y1 plus 25y2 and from here our this is our object function as you know this is our object function less than or equal to the combination of the constraints the combination of the constraints the combination of the constraints are this this is the combination of the constraints and from here this is this is the right hand, hand side of the constraints the right hand side of the constraints so from here so let's take the coefficients of x1 let's take the coefficient of x1 here is 3 so 3 is less than or equal to the coefficient of x1 that's 1 over 2 y1 plus 3 y2 or we can rewrite this equation as 1 over 2 y1 plus 3 y2 greater than or equal to 3 by the way we can write this uh, because uh, let's take a simple example 2 less than or equal to 3 can be written as 3 greater than or equal to 2 right so this is as such easy so we just convert this and let's take the coefficients of uh, x2 the coefficient of x2 here is 4 so 4 is obviously less than or equal to the coefficient of x2 that is 2y1 plus y2 so 4 is less than or equal to 2y1 plus y2 and can be rewritten as 2y1 plus y2 greater than or equal to 4 and now our uh, 
our decision variables are y1 and y2 so we have to state this y1 and y2 greater than or equal to zero as you remember the primal the primal uh, linear programming is maximization z equals 3x1 plus 4x2 uh, subjected to the constraint 1 over 2x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 30 and 3x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 25 and this is the negative theory solution x1 and x2 greater than or equal to zero and the dual will be written as minimization which is taken from here minimization is w equals 30 y1 plus 25 y2 subjected to the constraint subjected to the constraint 1 over 2 y1 plus 3 y2 greater than or equal to 3 and the second constraints will look like 2y1 plus y2 greater than or equal to 4 and then the negative the restriction y1 and y2 greater than or equal to 0. This shows this shows how the dual problem is formulated from the primal problem. By the way, it is an important concept which shows which shows the natural relation between the primal and the dual the primal and the dual when we when we discuss the importance of the uh, duality one of the importance of duality is it shows the mathematical and the economical information for the manager it tells the mathematical as well as the economical information because of the natural relationship between the primal and the dual we can solve either of the two to find out the optimal solution because their optimal solution at the end is the same the z value is the same whereas we can use different methods we can use different methods and either of the two when we are solving the dual or the primal either of the two either the dual or the primal requires less computation less computation anyway this is how the primal and the dual are related moving to the steps to form a dual the first step is is if the prima is maximization of the original linear programming is maximization the dual becomes minimization and the vice versa is also true that means if the original linear programming is minimization its corresponding dual will be maximization and the second step is the second step is the right hand side values of the primal constraints becomes the dual objectives function coefficients coefficients by the way it's not possible to say this steps they are just uh, logics when we are they are just logics to understand while we are converting original linear programming into dual linear programming and the third is the primal objective function coefficient becomes the right hand side values of the dual constraints the trans the fourth is the transpose of the primal co constraint coefficient becomes a dual constraint coefficient and the fifth constraint inequality signs are reversed if it is less than or equal to it will be greater than or equal to it will be greater than or equal to let's move to an example let's do an example the following primal problem is to determine the best production mix of CD players X1 and receiver X2 to maximize the profit. So it is a maximization because it is a profit. Our objective is to maximize the profit, so it is a maximization problem. Max a profit equals 50X1 plus 120X2. X1 and X2 are the X1 and X2 are the uh, corresponding the amount of uh, the CD player X1 and receiver X2 subjected to the constraints X1 plus 2X2 less than or equal to 40 40 is the hours available the hours available for the electrician time and the second constraint second constraint is 3X1 plus x2 less than or equal to 60 hours of audio technicians time available the dual of this problem has the objective of minimizing the opportunity cost of not using the resource in an optimal manner 
the dual variables it represents, the potential values of the resources. So let's find out the corresponding dual for this linear program, for this maximization linear programming. This dual tells us how to minimize or minimizing the opportunity cost of not using the resources in optimal manner. It tells about the economic concepts. It is called the variable that it will attempt to solve y1 and y2. In the d1, let's, let's make it or let's, uh, let's put y1 and y2 as our decision variable. y1 represents the potential hourly the contribution of words of electrician time. y2 stands for assigned work, words of audio electrician's time or the dual technician's resource. So the right-hand side quantities of the primal contains become the dual objective functions coefficient as we said before. So the right-hand side becomes the objective coefficients. The total opportunity cost that is to be minimized will be represented by the function 40y1 plus 60y2, namely minimize the opportunity cost. So our objective function here will be the minimization of the opportunity cost that is 40y1 and plus 60y2. 40 and 60 are the right hand side of the primal, the right hand side constraints of the primal. The corresponding dual containers are formed from the transpose of the primal constraints coefficient. Note that if the primal constraints are less than equal to the dual constraint will be greater than or if moving to this uh, the objective function is minimize opportunity cost that's 40y1 plus 60 60y2 then the other the other uh, constraint is the will be 1y1 plus 3y2 greater than or equal to 50. This is obtained from 50 is, by the way, the coefficient of the objective function. And 1y1 is obtained from this coefficient. And 3 is taken from this, the second constraint. And 2y1, 2 is taken from here, plus 1y2, 1 is taken from here. Or we can say that the matrix, the corresponding matrix for this maximization problem is this 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 40, 3, 1, 3, 1, 60, 50, 120, 50, 120, and z. Then we just transpose, we just transpose this matrix. Transpose means making the rows to be the column, making the rows. For example, when we make this 1, 2, 40 row into 1, 2, 40 column, so it will be 1, 2, and then 40. Look, 3, 1, 3, 1, and then 60. And 50, 120, 50, 120. So just, it is just the transpose of the primal matrix. The transpose of the primal matrix will be the dual, the dual. So we can use either, we can use either. We can just uh, take this, this one, one, two coefficients from the first primal constraints and this one, three, two, three, one, coefficients from the second primal constraints, 3, 1. This one is 1, 2. 1, 2. So we can take like this, or we can make a matrix which is corresponding for the primal, and then after transposing that matrix, we can make our dual. So let's see, let's see the meaning of this dual constraints. The, the meaning of this dual constraint, 50 is the income from one CD player. 50 is the income. The income should be at least 50. These are less than or equal to, so this should be greater than or equal to. This is the primal and this is the dual. Dual, right? This one is the primal and this one is the dual. 
if we find if we want to find out the dual of this dual we again arrive on this primal if we find out the dual of this dual we get this primal and the coefficients of y1 and y2 are the amounts of each scarce resource electrician time and audio electrician time that are required to produce a cd player these are the decision variables in the dual that is two hours of electrician time and three hours of audio technician's time are used up in making one cd player per cd player per cd player we are going to use two hours of electrician time and three hours of audio technician's time and each cd player produced a yield of 50 dollar of ribbon the ribbon will be 50 dollar 50 dollar at least 50 dollar Let's do one more additional example. So the original problem here is a primal problem, which is minimization. Minimize z equals z equals 4x1 plus 4x2 plus x3 subjected to the constraint x1 plus x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 2 and 2x1 plus x2 equal to 3 and 2x1 plus x2 plus 3x3 greater than or equal to 3 and the non-negative restriction x1 x2 and x3 greater than or equal to 0 as you see as you see from this uh, from this constraint the first constraint is x1 plus x2 plus x3 is then equal to 2 and 2x1 plus 2x2 equal to 3 are not normalized by normalized we mean that the primal minimization problem for the primal minimization problem all the constraints are related with the right hand side with greater than or equal to greater than or equal to so this less than or equal to and equal to should be converted into less than or equal to less than or equal to sorry greater than or equal to greater than or equal to so to convert this the first constraint less than or equal to two greater than or equal to we just multiply we have to multiply the first constraint with minus one using multiplying both sides by minus one so we can convert the first constraint like minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 greater than or equal to minus two when we multiply both sides by minus one the less than or equal to will be converted into greater than or equal to and the second constraint is also not normalized that is to x1 plus x2 equal to 3 can be represented by since this equal to so it can be represented by to x1 plus x2 equal to 3 can be represented by greater than or equal to and less than or equal to if to x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 3 and at the same time if to x1 plus to x2 less than or equal to 3 it, it should mean that it means that to x1 plus x2 is equal to 3 so these two these two functions represent the equality when two things at the same time greater than or equal to for, for example x1 is greater than or equal to two sorry if someone is greater than or equal to another and if uh, someone is less than or equal to at the same time from the other thing so we can say that they are equal they are equal because because of that we can represent this function to x1 plus x2 equals 3 by these two equations so we just incorporate this greater than or equal to as it is and we have to change these constraints we have to change because this less than or equal to we have to change into greater than or equal to to make it normalized so here in this case we have to multiply by minus one we have to multiply when we multiply by minus one it becomes minus two x1 minus x2 and the less than or equal to will be converted into greater than or equal to minus three so the normalized primal problem will be minimization for x1 minimization z equals 4x1 plus 
for x2 plus x3 subjected to the constraints minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 greater than or equal to minus 2 to x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 3 minus 2 x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to minus 3 and 2 x1 plus x2 plus 3 x3 greater than or equal to 3 and the other is then the negativity restriction that is x1 x2 and x3 greater than or equal to 0. So from now onwards, we can follow the uh, steps that we followed while we are solving example 1. Okay, once we normalized, once we normalized the primal problem, once we normalized the primal problem, like minimization, z, z equals 4x1 plus 4x2 plus x3 subject to the constraints. Uh, as you see here, these are the constraints which is expressed by greater than or equal to. Since this minimization, it is in a normalized way because the relationship of the constraints and the right hand side constraints are related with greater than or equal to. Then after we have to form from this linear polynomial, we have to form the primal argumented matrix that takes the coefficients of the objective function and the constraint. So this one is the coefficient. The first row of the matrix takes the coefficient of the first constraint. That is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and minus 2, the right-hand side. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and minus 2. And the second constraint is positive 2 here. There is positive 2, 1, 2, 1. And for x3, because there, it's, there, there is no x3 in the second constraint, so we have provided 0. Uh, coefficient 0 for x3 and the right hand side becomes the right hand side becomes 3 and the third constraint is minus 2 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 and there is no x3 so we, we provide 0 for x3 uh, and minus 3 the right hand side and the last uh, constraint is 2 1 3 2 1 3 and the right hand side is 3 and the other is the objective function, that is 4, 4, 1, 4, 4, 1. So this is the primal argumented matrix. Once we get this, prim, this primal argumented matrix, we just take the transposition. The transposition, the transposition means we take the uh, column of this for the first constraint, the column of this. So from this, the first constraint for this is minus 1, y1, 2, y2, minus 2, y3, plus 2, y2, less than or equal to 4, less than or equal to 4. As we said before, the, object, the coefficients of the objective function will be, will be the right-hand side for the constraints. This will be the right-hand side. And the second constraint is as a coefficient of minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, and the right-hand side will be 4. So look this, minus 1, minus y1 plus y2 plus minus y3 plus y4 is equal to 4. And the third constraint become here there is minus y1, and there is no y2, there is no y3 plus 3y4 is equal to 1. And since there are for decision variables, we have to state y1, y2, y3, and y4 greater than or equal to 0. This is the non-negativity. And the remaining is the objective function. The objective function will be the right-hand side of the primal. So we have to take, these are the right-hand side of the primal. The right-hand of the side of the primal will be the coefficients of the dual objective function. That is minus 2y1 plus 3y2 minus 3y3 plus 3y4 equals w. This is what you call the dual of the linear programming, the minimal linear programming, that is the maximization. Let's see the relationship between the primal and the dual. By the way, the primal and the dual has two types of relations, that is the weak duality and the strong duality. Let's start from the weak duality. For any feasible solution, x to the primal linear programming, and any feasible solution for y to the dual linear programming, we, we can write primal as maximization, and such that 
subjected to the constraints and these are the negativity and the dual can be minimization uh, can be written as the objective function like this and uh, such that the uh, constraints can be written like this and this is the non-negativity restrictions then here if the z values objective function is less than or equal to the w that is the objective function of the duality if the objective function of the uh, if the objective functions of the uh, primal is less than or equal to the objective function of the dual so we can say this weak duality for a strong duality for a strong duality if the objective functions of the primal equal to the objective functions of the dual then x star and x y star becomes the optimal solutions for the primal and the dual consecutively the dual consecutively so this is what we call a strong duality strong duality let's look at an example on weak duality and uh, strong duality let's start the weak duality so the primal problem is this and the dual problem is this as you see so uh, if we take uh, 5 2 is a feasible solution for the primal which fulfills the constraints and z becomes 350 and in the duality uh, if we take 0 10 and 0 is a feasible solution because it fulfills the constraints and when we replace this feasible solution in the minimization w so we get 400 as you see z is z is less than or equal to w the objective functions the objective functions of the primal is less than or equal to the objective functions of the dual so it, we can say that there is weak duality between these two uh, problems let's move to strong duality if the z value is for x and w is the objective function for u then x is an optimal for the primal and u is an optimal for the dual u is an optimal for the dual so in this case by the way in this case let's take this example uh, the optimal solutions are 3 and 2.8 and the optimal solutions are 0 10 and uh, 10 for the dual so these optimal solutions are found with different methods this is the maximization problem and this is the minimization problem because this is a primal and this is a dual the objective functions for both dual for both the primal and the dual is the same value has the same value at optimality at optimality it has the same value that's why that's why we can solve either the dual or the primal based on uh, less competition based on whether it requires less competition or more competition we, we have to choose the less competition whether it is the primal or the dual once we found the optimality once we found the optimality the objective function value is the same for the dual and the primal at that optimality point at that optimality point as you see when replace this optimal solutions in the z function of maximization primal problem and when we replace this optimal solutions of the dual in minimization of the objective function so we get that is 370 370 both sides so we can solve with either duality or with its primal let's move to the relationship between primal and uh, dual if the primal has an optimal solution the dual will have also an optimal solution if the primal has invisible solution so the dual will have either positive either invisible solution or unbounded solution either invisible or unbounded solution if the primal linear program has unbounded solution so the dual will have an invisible solution by the way you can get idea about the types of solutions 
like prima uh, the optimal solution invisible solution unbound solution and feasible solution from the previous videos you can get back and uh, to well understand the uh, types of uh, linear programming solutions types of linear programming solution the only point is that is both feasible and dual feasible is the optimum point the optimum point and the optimal values of the objective functions of the prima and the dual are equal the objective functions are equal for dual and prima at optimal point but it's obvious that we drive it with different meters we, we drive it with different meters so we can use either meters either solving the linear programming that's the primal one or the dual one because ultimately at optimal point both objective functions the dual and the primal are the same this is all what i have for today and i have provided you some questions to check your understanding the first question is what does duality in linear program model mean first you have to define what duality means and then mention some of the benefits of duality because of there are some benefits for the duality we have to learn duality so you have to mention down some of the benefits of duality and the third question is find the dual of the following linear programming problem and even find out the dual of dual First, you have to find out the dual, and next, you have to find out the dual of the dual problems. This is all what I have. Thank you. Have a good time. Bye.